What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh video. In this video, I'm going to be covering one of the last couple decks in breaker format. Um, I've spent a fair amount of time in this format and, uh, and you know, we're nearing the end of the sort of new decks that I can actually cover. But this is one that I wanted to cover because it's really one of the biggest gimmicks of the new cards that came out in Magician's Force, and that's spell counters. So, you know, you may see Triple Apprentice Magician and think, oh, this might be like GBO's list that did very well in the recent Breaker Tournament. But that's not the case. This is a much worse deck than that one. Um, but it's still pretty fun. So uh, let's just talk about it. So there were a variety of cards that took advantage of these spell counters, uh, you know, in Magician's Force, things like Break of the Magical Warrior. We also saw some skilled Dark Magician decks. You know, I showed off a Dark Paladin deck beforehand, but there's some other powerful monsters that can use spell counters as well. Royal Magical Library can be a draw engine. So if it gets three spell counters on it, you get to draw a card, uh, which is very nice. Uh, and also Magical Marionette is a really interesting boss monster. 2,000 attack, but it gains 200 attack for each spell counter on it. Whenever a spell card is activated, it gains a spell counter. And you can remove two spell counters from this card, turn one monster in the field, and destroy it. So that's, you know, removal. Uh, it can get itself up to a fair amount of attack. Um, so I think this is a pretty interesting deck idea. And Apprentice Magician can also replenish these spell counters uh, when it's summoned. So I think that there are a lot of interesting sort of interactions in this deck with these spell counters. Um, that being said, you know, this is sort of a gimmicky strategy. Uh, so it's not necessarily as good as some other things in the format, but let's give it a go and see how it actually works. So going through the card by card, we get Triple Apprentice Magician. This is very, very good at replenishing your spell counters and also just bringing out powerful spellcasters from deck. Things like Magician of Faith or Magical Scientist as well uh, are both targets for it and can be very, very good to bring out in a pinch. We got Break of the Magical Warrior, uh, which can be spell and trap removal, as well as just being a 1900 attack point monster, which is very nice. We got Exiled Forest for removal. Doesn't play into the spell counter thing, but it's just a general good monster same with fiber jar uh, this can reset the board state and potentially put you into a pretty good position we got injection fairy lily to pump out the damage we've got the scientist faith mentioned before uh, we've got sangan since serpent uh, along with witch and tribe infecting virus uh, all these are pretty pretty good cards uh, just like with exiled fiber jar etc uh, we got triple skill dark magician there's a 1900 attack beater which is nice but we are playing one copy of dark magician to potentially bring out off of this uh, if we actually manage to get the three counters on it so that's the monster lineup. I think there are definitely some iffy choices be, sort of leaning into the spell counter shtick, um, but it's still pretty fun to sort of put together. Uh, and I think it's not the worst thing in the world, especially when you got the spells and traps that we've got, which is Change of Heart, Confiscation, Dark Hole, Delinquent Duo, Graceful Charity, Mirage of Nightmare, Monster Reborn, Triple MST to pair with the Mirage of Nightmare, Painful Choice, Pot of Greed, Raigeki, Snatch Deal, Forceful Sentry. For the traps, we got Call of the Haunted, Imperial Order, Mirror Force, and Ring of Destruction. And then for the side deck, we've sort of got it teched out for a variety of decks in the format. We've got Triple King Tiger, Wangku, if we're up against a Scientist deck. We've got Kaiku in case we're up against a deck that actually cares about its graveyard. We've got Harpies and Heavy Storm in case we're up against a back row heavy deck. We've also got Triple Royal Decree for certain back row heavy decks. Uh, we've got Double Nomen of Crossout and Ceasefire for more flip focused decks. And we've also got Triple Right Gecky Break. This can be good to bring in as Disruption. But also for the Scientist deck, this can be good at stopping that play. For the Fusion deck, uh, we've got just sort of the toolbox here. So we got Dark Balter, uh, Dark Fire Dragon, Dragons of the Wicked Knight. Those are for the different levels they've got. Um, Empress Judge and Punished Eagle and Roaring Ocean Snake, 2100 attack each. So that can come up. Uh, Fiend Skull Dragon, Reaper on the Nightmare, Ryu Sentry. Uh, Super Robo Lady and Super Robo Yaru are interesting monsters that can occasionally come up, although a scientist is not as likely to come up, but it can. Um, same with Last Warrior from Another Planet. Very, very rare cases where this can come up. Uh, and then we've got Thousand Knife Strict as well. Now, again, since this is at a time when the Fusion deck was unlimited, we sort of play uh, that, you know, if you need a card that's not actually in your extra deck proper, um, then you can sort of like proxy it and, and sort of play as if you have that in your extra deck because they would be unlimited and there's no real way to do that. Uh, on Dueling Book in the unlimited sort of format rooms. Uh, you can do it in the GOAT format rooms, but not in the unlimited format rooms. So, you know, we're kind of lenient on that. And most of the time, these won't really come up outside of like the scientist stuff. Um, but it's good to keep in mind. But that's going to do it for the deck breakdown. Let's dive into the games and see how this thing actually does in action. Okay, we've got a first game up here against Soul65, a frequent guest on the channel, very active user on the YGO from Zero Discord. Uh, link in the description of that down below. If you want to play games in any of the formats that we covered, it's a great place to do it. 
Um, but they are going to win the Rock, Paper, Scissors, so they will be going first here. Let's just hope they're not on a Scientist FTK deck. Um, but so often doesn't bring those sorts of decks, so uh, hopefully we'll be in a good spot. They're going to go for a Pot of Greed here. Fire a Graceful Charity as well. I mean, that might as well be FTK in most cases. Um, pot plus graceful is pretty rough. They discard a spear soldier, which means that they might be on grave keepers, which is kind of interesting. Uh, that was a deck that people were experimenting with in Yada. Um, but it hadn't really translated here because, uh, you know, this format's much more faster paced. Um, but they set two and pass, uh, so we're just going to set a Royal Magical Library, set IO, set MST, pass back to them. Now, we could have gone aggressive there, maybe summoning out, like, Seal Dark Magician hitting in, um, but we figure they've got whatever they might want in their hand because of the pot plus graceful. So I figure we can play a little bit passively. Um, this Royal Magical Library is annoying for decks to deal with. Scientists, you know, most people bring out, like, Dark Balser with it. They don't bring out something like Roaring Ocean Sea Snake or something like that. Um, so you're not necessarily going to be able to get over this with a scientist right away. Our opponent's going to bring out a breaker, and, uh, they're going to get break, and let's hope they hit the MST here. Uh, and they're going to roll die to see what they hit. Ah, uh, that was the wrong one. They hit the IO. Oof, we would have liked to have, keep, to have uh, kept that around. But, uh, you know, it doesn't always work out that way. They're going to flip up the Witch of the Black Forest there and try and get in, but the Royal Magical Library will protect us here. Uh, they'll take 400. And they'll pass back to us. We draw a saying in, which is not bad. We're going to bring out this um, dark, skilled dark magician here. Um, and we're just going to hit into the breaker. I figure this is like pretty decent. If they have a way to clear the skilled dark magician, they still can't quite get over the royal magical library. Uh, so I feel like this is a pretty good position. Uh, our opponent's going to go for a change of heart on the skill dark that will put counters on both monsters here and they're going to bring out an exiled force as well they're also going to fire a last will here bringing out a magical scientist which is kind of interesting because you know the fusion monster that it brings out can't actually attack but i guess they could like bring out a ryu senshi and just stop us from using traps if we've got them and they are going to pay a thousand here and bring out a ryu senshi indeed uh so i mean not the worst case for us oh but another last will actually will make it uh, the worst case, and they're going to bring out a Catapult Turtle. They're at 6,300, so they don't quite have enough to kill us just with this, but uh, yeah, this MST will not protect us here, and uh, they will be able to attack with everything except for the Sentry, so uh, that will indeed be the end of the game for us. So uh, we're just going to you know, fire MST on the back row just to get a bit more information going into game two. We want to know if they're playing things like Rite of Spirit, and they are indeed. So that may affect our decision making in the future as well. So for game two, we um, know that they're on Gravekeepers, so we choose to side out Fiber Jar and Magician of Faith because both of those cards interact with the graveyard. And, you know, into Necro Valley, they're a bit bad. So, um, you know, we didn't really get to see much of the Gravekeepers side of things there. Um, we just kind of got Scientist FDK'd. Um, but, you know, it is good to sort of prepare for that just in case. This is a great opening hand. We've got Confi, so we're going to fire that. Uh, see what they're working with there, and we're going to take the Nobleman of Cross out. Um, we also see that they're on a Painful Choice, Mirage of Nightmare, Ready of Spirit, and MST. I'll, I guess I'll just show it for the camera there. So, um, we took the Nobleman because we didn't want to give them a way to clear our set. But maybe we should have actually just taken the Painful and summoned the Apprentice Magician, because if they want to, like, clear it while it's face up, they'd have to, like, attack into it, basically. Um... But then they then we get a set out and they Nolman that. So yeah, I think Nolman was probably the right choice here. At least with painful, like we have the choice of what to give them. Um but yeah, it's a bit iffy. We're just going to set this mirror force here because we don't want our MST to get MST'd by them. Uh we want to MST their Mirage when they try and use it. So we want to keep the MST in hand. They're gonna go for a painful choice here. And they're going to send a Nobleman, a Confi, a Forceful, a Spear Soldier, and a Cannon Holder. Now, we're going to give them the Cannon Holder. That's the least threatening card they've got uh, from that send there. But Rite of Spirit will enable them to potentially bring back the other Gravekeeper if they want to. Um, luckily for us, you know, uh, them attacking into Apprentice here would be pretty good for us. Um, they're just going to set three, activate Mirage, pass back to us, though. And then in the draw phase, we're going to fire this MST, pop their Mirage there. So... Uh, I feel pretty good about this. We're going to set a Royal Magical Library as well and set this Dark Hole pass back to them. Maybe it was a bit greedy to set the Dark Hole, but I don't want to get blown up by, like, Delinquent Duo and lose both my board clears. So I figure it's fine just setting the Dark Hole there. If they MST it, 
you know, that's kind of unfortunate, but we do have the right Geki here, so it's not the worst thing in the world. We draw a, another Royal Magical Library, not really the most useful thing for us right now. We're just going to fire Red Geki because we have the read that they're set maybe a Spy, and we don't want them to get too many cards on field here. So we're going to Red Geki that, then we're going to just flip up this Apprentice Magician and get in for 400. It's a bit of chip damage. Uh, we don't get to replenish a counter on anything, but I think that's ultimately okay. Um, we also potentially want to trigger their like Red of Spirit prematurely, um, get them to fire it now to take to like block some chip damage and then they potentially have to attack into a press magician we can bring out magician of faith get back our spell you know um so i feel like it's it's worth just doing this to bait something out they're gonna bring out saying again um we're gonna bring out magical sciences because actually um i just remember we decided out the magician of faith as i mentioned in the siding process um, but scientists will also be able to clear the sang in there. Uh, we're going to flip up scientists, not use priority. Maybe we should have, and just in case they did have the ring here. Um, but to be fair, like, they probably would have just ringed the dark balter that we brought out. So I think it's ultimately fine. Um, yeah, we do take the 300 from that, though. And we're not able to bring out dark balter to clear the sang in. That's fine. We kind of got a defensive hand here. Um, so we can just set another apprentice magician and pass back to our opponent. Opponent's going to bring out a breaker, the magical warrior. And they're going to get breaking, so this could be really bad for us because both of our sets are really good. They're going to hit the Mirror Force, quite unfortunate. They're going to MST our other one, hit the Dark Hole there, and then right of Spirit back a Gravekeeper Spear Soldier. So this could be pretty bad for us. They do indeed attack into the Apprentice Magician with the Spear Soldier. So we're just going to bring out the last target left in deck, which is another Apprentice Magician there. Then they're going to hit into the Royal Magical Library with the Breaker there. Uh, now, kind of a neat thing we can do, we can flip up Apprentice Magician next turn and then put uh, a spell counter on the Royal Magical Library, which is kind of cool. And as a note, if the Royal Magical Library here was not on field, we would have had to place it on our opponent's breaker. Um, so that's kind of a downside to playing all these apprentices is that it can occasionally benefit your opponent. Um, but I don't think it's the worst in the world. We're going to go for a Graceful here. This will put a counter on Royal Magical Library. We're going to pitch a uh, Tribe Infecting Virus and another Royal Magical Library. Uh, I think I could have maybe kept the Tribe, but the reason I didn't is because I wanted to clear Breaker. Um, well, actually, first I want to clear the Spear Soldier, but I do want to like threaten to clear Breaker. And also, if I use Tribe on Breaker, then that will also clear my Royal Magical Library, which I don't want to happen. So... We're going to bring up this Wang Hu, hit over these Spear Soldiers so that way we don't keep taking damage. And also if they like draw a Cannon Holder, uh, they won't be able to tribute. And we're then going to set this Call of the Haunted Pass back to them. We can call back like our Scientists, we can call back our Tribe. We've got a lot of good options here. Uh, well, we can't actually call back the Scientist while Wang Hu's on field, but you know, I think ultimately it's still fine. We're just going to attack into the Breaker, which they did leave in attack there, uh, just to deal a bit of chip damage and chip away at their board presence as well. We're going to set the Sangan, pass back to them. Uh, they're going to dark hole the board, which is kind of unfortunate, but we do indeed get a search off the Sangan. Um, because we're a non turd player, we do have to search first. So we're just going to search out a witch here. Uh, they're going to search out a witch as well. And they're going to summon out that witch and uh, hit in for 1100. Uh, we debate potentially, you know, calling back our Wang Hu or something like that. Um, but I think we're, I'm actually going to save that because we can just call back the magical scientist here and, you know, bring up Balter attack over the witch. So that is indeed what we're going to do. We're also going to summon out a witch of our own here, uh, to get in some additional damage. So we're going to hit over their witch with the dark Balter. Uh, that's 900 and then attack in for 14 with our other monsters here. And I feel like we're in a really, really good spot. I mean, we're just going to set this duo as a bluff and Balter will go back to the extra deck. They're just going to set one, pass back to us. Now we could potentially bring out Senshi here, but honestly, uh, I feel like we can just attack him with Witch, switch uh, Magical Sciences to Defense, and pass back to our opponent. Uh, they are going to just pass back to us, and I feel really good about this. We could bring out Breaker, and we are indeed going to do that. If they've got, like, Torrential, we get a search off the Witch. We've got the Forceful for the last card in hand, so I think it's ultimately fine. Um... But this won't quite be lethal damage if we do want to break their back row. And so we could potentially just switch these scientists to attack and attack in for everything here. And that will potentially be a game shot. But I think honestly, it's fine just breaking their back row. It's MST that will pop these scientists. So we weren't actually going to potentially win this turn either way. Um, but, you know, if we had kept the uh, counter on breaker, then we would have actually, you know, still dealt 300 more damage. Um... But I think this is ultimately fine. We've got Forceful to clear that last card from hand. And also, if they do clear our board, we've got a Witch Search as well. So I feel very good about this. We're going to send back a Change of Heart there. They're just going to set one pass back to us. We draw Mirage. I mean, that's nice, but 
honestly, uh, we just kind of win the game here. They're just going to MST our back row there and admit defeat. So very, very good game too. Seeing that they weren't on Necro Valley there and seeing how we really struggled with our Prince Magicians when there was only the Scientist as a good target in deck, uh, we actually do bring back in the Magician of Faith here. Um, and I think we side out some of the hand drips as well. I think we side out like the duo potentially. Um, and I think we also bring in some more Wang Hughes even because of Spy. Like Spy is very annoying. Um, but I mean, let's see how this game goes here. Uh, our opponent is going to draw. Think about this. Fire a painful choice, sending five pretty decent ones. Now, we don't want to give them Forceful or Comfy. Unfortunately, they might have duo in hand already since they didn't send that. And we also don't really want to give them Nobleman, give them the contents of our hand. So we'll just give them Necro Valley. We've got the MST in hand here. Um, so we can pop that if we really do need to. Uh, and I think this is ultimately okay. Our opponent's going to go for a Pot of Greed here. Drawing to Fire a Graceful now, uh, and then Pitch to. Uh, they're going to think that this, they're going to pitch a Spy and a Necro Valley here. They're going to send another pass back to us. We draw Magical Marionette, which is very, very nice here. Uh, we're just going to set the Royal Magical Library, set an MST, pass back to them. And they are going to think about this a bit and bring out a Breaker. They will be able to pop our back row here, um, which is quite unfortunate because we would have liked to save that MST for, you know, any of their powerful back row. But uh, luckily with our Royal Magical Library here, we will be able to withstand this attack. They're going to hit in to our Royal Magical Library, take five, and then set one pass back to us. We draw Painful Choice, which we could potentially fire here, but we're going to first bring out this uh, Skill Dark Magician, hit into the Spy, then main two, we're going to fire Painful Choice. Now, I make a major misplay with firing this now, because I was still thinking of this as if like we were in game one and we had all the hand rips in our deck, um, but I forgot that we actually sided them out to put in some better stuff against the Gravekeeper matchup. So, my Painful here is a bit awkward, and uh, so I just... You know, I kind of flounder with it. I think I probably should have also just sent some powerful spells to get back with Faith. Um, because as of now, like, all we've got are two knocks and an MST, which isn't the best setup if we do want to get full value off of our Faith. Um, but I figure we've got a pretty robust board right now. So we don't necessarily need to go for the Faith soon. And I figure we'll draw into a powerful spell um, at some point soon. Because, you know, those are kind of like a dime a dozen in this format. Um... So I'm going to go for the Painful now to send a couple token cards here that are not the best, but they sort of deck thin out the deck a bit. Uh, we get two counters there. We're going to set a knock here as a bluff and pass back to them. Our opponent, unfortunately, has Regeki, so they're going to get a lot of advantage off of that. And uh, we are kind of in a really bad spot now. Um, our opponent's going to pass back to us. And Tribe Infecting Virus really does help us out here a lot. We can bring that out. Uh, use Effect with Priority, pitch this Dark Magician, and attack in for 16. Now, we used this Effect with Priority in case they had a Ring of Destruction, uh, as that would have been really bad for us. But I feel like we're in a pretty decent position now. Um, unfortunately, our Graveyard is not set up for Faith, but I do feel like this is ultimately okay. They're going to bring out a Mystic Tomato, hit in to our Tribe Infecting Virus here, and they will take two, bring out a Magical Scientist, uh, pay a 1,000 off the Scientist, and then they'll be able to actually suck up our Tribe Infecting Virus with a Thousand Eyes Restrict. Uh, or not. Uh, they're going to go for Senshi first, then Last Will. Uh-oh. This might be pretty bad for us. You know, Last Will out a Catapult Turtle. Um, but I don't think they actually have the life points. Yeah, no, I don't think they have the life points to actually make this um, quite an OTK here. They will be able to get in some additional damage. So, I mean, that's good for them, but like... Yeah, I think they might have miscalculated on the math there. But I feel like we're in a pretty decent spot. Drawing an Exiled Force, though, is not the best. Uh, I think probably we just have to summon it and hit in for a 1,000. But it feels really bad to do that. I mean, yeah, if we had powerful spells in Grave Nade, we could have set the Magician here. But yeah, as is, we just kind of got to get aggressive here. Attacking in for a 1,000 uh, and hoping that they don't really have anything here. They're just going to go for an MST there. And think about this a little bit. Summon out a Cannon Soldier, fire a Rite of Spirit, and yeah, we would have been dead here either way. Um, so I guess it didn't really matter too much off the Painful Sends, but I do think that still was a major misplay. We could have used that Painful a bit more profitably, and that could have potentially saved us from defeat here. But as is, uh, we did lose this match. And I think that this match really does show some of the major problems with the deck. 
Uh, the Royal Magical Libraries are just way too defensive, and you can't really do anything actively with them, even though there are a lot of powerful spells in this format. Uh, it's just not really worth using three of them to then get a draw, um, or at least in one turn, right? Over time, that can be good, but uh, as is, it's kind of a disappointing card, and you have to wait until your opponent attacks into it uh, to actually use it, because you don't necessarily want to summon an attack and, you know, fire your spells. So, uh, I think that this deck might be a little bit too defensive, um, but, you know, we'll see how it does in the next match, and maybe it will potentially um, prove me wrong in that aspect. Okay, we've got another game here against Colgate, who is responsible for the Amazon's Burn deck, which I featured on my channel uh, a couple videos ago. And so, always a pleasure to have them on. Uh, and we start off with a pretty epic Rock, Paper, Scissors here. Unfortunately, they do manage to win the Rock, Paper, Scissors, so... Uh, this does put us at a bit of a disadvantage here, especially if they're playing Scientist, but our hand is really nice here, so, um, we feel pretty good about this. They're gonna go for a Thunder Dragon there, pitching a Thunder Dragon, grabbing two more likely. Yep, they will get two more indeed. And they're gonna fire a Forceful, so they're gonna take the Graceful. Uh, going first was really good for them. Uh, yeah, because that Graceful kind of tied our hand together. Um... They're going to summon out a uh, Senju here, searching out a Paladin of White Dragon, which is a very interesting card, uh, which I may feature on the channel in the future, so pay attention to that. They're going to go for a Painful Choice here, uh, sending a Confi, Blue Eyes, White Dragon Ritual, MST, and Raigeki Break. Now, I'm going to give them the Blue Eyes because it's kind of a brick in hand. This is kind of awkward with Paladin because Paladin can't actually summon from Grave like Skilled Dark Magician can. So, just putting Blue Eyes in Grave might have actually been the right choice because... They don't really have a way to get it back. But I think it's better just to give them a brick. They might have another Blue Eyes in deck anyways. So, like, um, yeah, I, th I think it's probably just better to give them something that doesn't really do anything on this board state than to give them a card that's actually active. But this is, this is kind of funny because we've got, like, Blue Eyes versus Dark Magician, which is kind of cool. We draw a Forceful as well, so we're going to fire that Forceful. And we see that they've got two Paladin, two Thunder Dragon, and a Blue Eyes, which is very, very funny. Um... I think of these cards, we probably just want to send back Paladin. Like, they're all kind of a brick, but we don't necessarily want to put Blue Eyes back in deck. Um, or maybe we do. I mean, I don't know. Blue Eyes can be searched out of deck, which is part of why we don't want to do it. Um, maybe we should have actually put back Thunder Dragon, because that's the biggest brick if you draw it. But I don't know. I think just sending them back a Ritual Monster in hand is pretty good. So we're just going to send Paladin. Um... There's also potentially an argument that I shouldn't have fired the Forceful at all, and I should have waited, um, because I, I knew that they had two Thunder Dragon, a Blue Eyes, and a Paladin in hand, so maybe I shouldn't have fired it for that last card there, but, yeah, I don't know, uh, it's a bit debatable, but they attack into our saying, and we grab Sinister Serpent here, uh, they're going to set one pass back to us, we draw Injection Fairy Lily, which is very, very good, we're just going to summon out that Injection Fairy Lily, fire Raigeki here, luckily we do have the MST for that, uh, Io, and we clear a Magician of Faith, which is very nice. We're going to hit in for 3,400, and we feel like we've got a pretty good clock on them, especially knowing that their hand is, like, all bricks. Uh, they're going to banish two and summon out a Soul of Purity Light in defense position, then pass back to us. Now, we have to think here a little bit. We could potentially just attack into the Soul of Purity Light with Injection Fairy Lily, and then potentially summon a monster, like, to do chip damage, but that drops us down to only two Injection Fairy Lily activations, so it's not really something I necessarily want to do. I figure we've got other ways to clear the Soul of Pure Dim Light. We could potentially just hard tribute summon Dark Magician uh, in a couple turns if we really wanted to. So I figure I'll wait on this a bit. We draw a Royal Magical Library as well. We're just going to set the Serpent, though, planning for the Summon of Dark Magician next turn. And they're going to fire a Pot of Greed here, so their hand's likely a bit more unbricked, especially when they draw a Graceful Charity as well. Uh, they're going to set to Fire Mirage of Nightmare and hit in to our Sinister Serpent. Luckily, we will get back that Serpent. We're going to fire an MST in the draw phase there, grab back Serpent in the standby phase here. And now that that uh, Soul Period Light is an attack, we'll just attack in with the Lily. They do have a Regeki Break, so they'll be able to pop that. But we can set this Royal Magical Library pass back to them. Royal Magical Library will wall up against their Soul of Purity and Light. They're going to hit into our set here. It's Apprentice. So we'll grab a Scientist, uh, which can both give us Tribute Fodder for Dark Magician and also suck up the Soul of Purity and Light. Um, they're going to pass back to us. And I make a major misplay here. Um, so we do bring out a Thousand Eyes Restrict uh, as a way to suck up the Soul of Purity and Light. 
And, you know, initially in my head when I was mapping this out last turn, I was like, okay, cool, I can suck up the Soul Period in Light, I can bring in another monster with Scientist, trigger them off for Dark Magician and attack in for like 2800. Um, however, I forget that, you know, monsters brought out by Scientist can't actually attack directly, and so I can't actually attack in here. Um, so I say never mind. And, um, yeah, it, it's a big snafu, but uh, yeah, I, I don't take it back because... I figure not taking back will allow me to learn a bit more and uh, remember my mistake in the future, but that could potentially have cost me the game here. Um, yeah, especially because their backers don't really do anything to stop that play. So uh, I think that was a major, major mistake on my part. They do have a Call of the Haunted, which will indeed work with Soul of Purity Light, apparently, because uh, this is like old card text and, you know, based on rulings, it will um, be able to come back. But yeah, we take 1700 from that, and they're going to pass back to us. Now we can bring out um, this Dark Magician here and hit over the Soul Period Light with this Call of the Haunted. I feel like that's a pretty good option. Um, you know, we know about the MST in the macro because they flash, but we're not going to play as if we do. So uh, they will blind MST our set, and I think that's a pretty good play there. Uh, they are going to just pass back to us, and we feel very good about this. Now, we make major misplay number two, and that's not grabbing back the Serpent from hand here. So we attack in for 2,500. Main phase two, I want a way to protect myself in case they, like, top deck change of heart, which will just kill us here. Um, so I choose to set the fiber jar. If I brought back the serpent in the standby phase, then I would have been able to set that. But it's kind of too late to do that now. So I set the fiber jar. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm probably still in a favored position here, even if they just summon up something to attack in the fiber jar. Uh, and that is indeed what they do. So I think, like, I mean, let's see their hand. Uh, yeah, we were perfectly fine here uh, if we had just, like, set Serpent. If we had just set Serpent, I think we would have definitely won this game. Um, and if we attacked in with Dark Magician earlier, we also would have definitely won this game. So, kind of unfortunate to see these misplays really, really messing things up here. Now, there's still a chance we do win this game, as I do think we are still favored, um, given that they're only at 1,900 attack, or 1,900 life points, that is. And we do play Skilled Dark Magician, so, you know, there are some top decks that do just get us into this game and uh, allow us to win. And we do have a skill Dark Magician in hand, along with some Injection Fairy Lilies. So I feel very, very good about this. Uh, they're going to shuffle everything back there. They're also a bit down on monsters because they've done Soul Purity and Light twice. Um, so I feel, like, decent about my chances here. They're playing a lot of Bricks as well. So um, I think this is pretty good. But, uh, I mean, we'll have to just see what they get. Cause they could potentially get something really good here to set up. And we don't have, like, spell and trap removal, so... They're gonna go for a copy, dropping down to 900. They're gonna take the Lily, which I think is probably the right choice. And I accidentally shuffled into the deck because I'm thinking it's Forceful Sentry. I'm all over the place in this game, I apologize for that. Uh, they're going to bring out a Senju, and it looks like they're all over the place as well, because, uh, you know, uh, Senju searches monsters, not spells, so... Um, this is kind of a, a silly match. Uh, with major misplays all around. So we're going to fire this Painful here, send MSTs, uh, as well as a Forceful and a Confi here. And our opponent's going to give us the Confi. This will cost a 1,000, but I do think it's probably worth it just to rip apart their hand a little bit. We're going to bring out a uh, Skill Dark Magician here. They do have Regeki Break to pop our Skill Dark Magician. And now we're going to fire this Confi, see what they've got. They've got a Magician of Faith and a Paladin of White Dragon. Uh, now, I think the more annoying monster here is the Magician of Faith. Because that could potentially bring... Well, actually, no. It's not really that annoying. Uh, I probably should have actually taken the Paladin, now that I think about it. Because they don't really have any spells in Grave. If they top deck a really good spell, the Magician of Faith is good. But if they top deck a really good spell, they can probably win either way. Uh, so I think I probably should have actually taken the Paladin as opposed to the Faith. Um, but, you know, I just send the Faith because it's second nature at this point. I set this uh, Mirror Force pass back to them. They've got Harpies. They'll be able to pop that Mirror Force there. Attack in for 1,400 and pass back to us. Now, we do have the Skill Dark Magician, so we'll just bring that out. Hit in to the Senju there. Dropping them down to 400 life points. Pass back to them. And they're going to go for a Painful Choice. Really, really good card to draw there. They send three Soul of Purity and Lights, a Monster Reborn, and a Pot of Greed. Now, they do have Blue Eyes and Grave, so we can't give them the Reborn. Um... So we have the choice really between a Soul of Purity and Light and the Pot of Greed. Now we do have Exiled to pop the Soul of Purity and Light. So it's not necessarily the most threatening thing in the world. We also have a uh, Magician here set. So what we could do potentially is set the Apprentice Magician. They attack into it with Soul of Purity and Light. We bring out another Apprentice Magician. And then next turn, summon an Exiled Force, pop the Soul. So that might be the choice as well. Um, 
Whereas if we give them Pot of Greed, they could potentially draw into something out to this board. But I think I actually should have given them the Pot of Greed since my plan takes place over like two turns. And so they're probably going to draw into what they draw off the Pot of Greed anyways. And so, you know, if there's something in those top two cards that kills me here, uh, then it's better to have them draw it now and not just like have a monster on board as well. Um, so I think I should have given them the Pot of Greed as counterintuitive as that may seem. But uh, I choose to give them the Soul Period and Light because I've sort of got this game plan in mind for what to do with it. But uh, yeah, I think that was a major misplay at number three in this match. So this match is just filled with major misplays here. Uh, and I think that we definitely could have won this game here if uh, if we had played it a bit differently. But as is, we're just going to set this Prince Condition, pass back to our opponent. And if they don't have a way to deal with that, uh, then I think we should be pretty good here. Unfortunately, they have Sonic Bird, which will allow them to search out this White Dragon Ritual to hand. They will be able to Ritual Summon out the Paladin of White Dragon. And Paladin of White Dragon does destroy set monsters just automatically. So uh, that will indeed be the end of the game. So kind of cool that we lost to Paladin of White Dragon there. But very unfortunate that, you know, we misplayed probably three times. And each misplay probably cost us the game. So, um, yeah, kind of unfortunate. It does show that, like, when you're playing these jank decks, it does take a fair amount of concentration and skill to actually do it. You can't just, you know, sort of be on autopilot. You really do have to um, play very, very well. Now, knowing that they're on this Blue Eyes deck, I think I keep the deck largely the same. I think I might have sided in some Raigeki breaks in case they bring out Blue Eyes onto field. But I think ultimately, like, our deck is pretty well matched against this. Like, uh, I mean, their deck is very, very bricky. And, uh, yeah, I feel like we're pretty, pretty good here. I mean, our deck can also be bricky, but, like, they've got a lot more hard bricks than we do. So, I feel like it's fine. They're going to start off with a Harpies. We've got an Io, so that will stop that. They're just going to set two, pass back to us. Uh, and we're going to think about whether to leave this Io up or let it go. Um, but we are indeed going to pay the 700 there. Bring out a Magical Scientist, pay a 1,000, uh, and then bring out a Dark Balter here, which will be able to negate their set. We're just going to flip the Witch Attack in. Now, if they've got Mirror Force, we do get a bit punished by this, and they do indeed have Mirror Force. Um, but we will be able to get a Search off the Witch, so it's not the worst thing in the world. We also do have this Ring of Destruction here, so that will be able to stop any aggressive pushes that they do, potentially. And uh, so we're just going to, you know, pass back to them, see what they do here. They're going to set one, set another, fire a Mirage, pass back to us. Now, we have to think here because we're actually not quite sure if, like, if we let Io, like, just drop. Uh, and then they, like, we'll be, be able to MST their Mirage before they get the draws. Um, I mean, we can chain MST to Mirage's effect, but will they still get the draws in that case? And what we kind of determined from this is that, uh, we can indeed, like, MST in response to the Mirage activation in standby, and that will prevent them from getting the draws. So I do just let the IO drop and then fire MST on their set, um, because I figure, like, reborning back a uh, Scientist and then hitting into their set, and then also setting up a Mirage as well is really good. So I figure that's worth doing. Um, and so I think it's worth letting the IO drop. So we're not going to use priority in case they've got, like, you know, um, a ring or a TT or something like that. Uh, I feel fine doing this. We're just going to bring out a Dark Balter there. Attack into their set with the Dark Balter. Uh, that is a Faith, so we'll be able to get over that. We'll tack in for 300 here. Set a, an Apprentice Magician and pass back to them. I think we could have potentially gotten a bit more aggressive here, summoning out Skill Dark Magician and attacking in. That does play a bit more into board clears, but we do have the Ring to serve as a defensive measure. We've also got this Mirage here as well, so that can replenish our hand a bit as well. So I think I did make a bit of a misplay there, but... I think it's not the worst thing in the world here. Our board is pretty robust. They're going to send uh, two hand rips, two knocks, and a metamorphosis here. And we're just going to give them the knock, as we don't really mind if our Prince Magician is banished here. It's kind of unfortunate, but like, I feel like our hand is more aggressive than defensive. So if they want to use a Nolman on our set, that's fine. They will indeed do that. They'll set one pass back to us. We draw a Snatch Jewel, which is pretty good. We're going to bring in a Skill Dark Condition here and just attack in with everything. Uh, they're going to take the 300, and we'll attack in for 1,900, and they'll take that as well. So we feel very good about that. We'll set this Snatch Deal, and then we're just going to pass back to them. We don't really have a way to out the Mirage here, and I feel like we want to keep the Tribe in hand, and we don't necessarily need to dig for cards yet. Uh, so we're actually just going to wait on the Mirage here. Uh, they set one, pass back to us. We draw Dark Magician, which isn't the best, but not the worst either. We're going to pay a 1,000 for these signs, just bringing out Dark Balter here. And then we're just going to hit in with the Dark Balter. Uh, they've got Raigeki Break, and this might have actually meant it was better to bring out Bean Skull instead, as that wouldn't have been able to be targeted with the Raigeki Break. Um, I think ultimately it's fine. 
uh this does bait out the regeki break and like if it was like a sangan or a witch then it would have definitely been better to go into balter so uh that will be popped uh we're just gonna hit into their set if it's like magician of faith they can get back a powerful spell but there's nothing we're really too too concerned about here um so i feel fine with that it's a merchant though and so those grab a Raigeki break. Merchant's a very cool card. I haven't really gotten a chance to talk about it much this format, but it is kind of interesting. Uh, I don't think it's like the best, especially compared to a lot of other monsters in this format, which is why I haven't really featured it in any decks, but it's cool to see someone experimenting with it. So we will then be able to get in for 300 damage more and then just pass back to our opponent here. I still feel we're in a very, very good spot. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Sinister Serpent, which is really good, especially paired with the Tribe Infecting Virus. I summon that out just to get a bit in a bit more chip damage. This actually might have been a mistake um, because they like change of heart uh, our scientist and then bring up Balter, uh, attack into the Serpent. And they've got a way to like protect against like Ring. Uh, then we lose access to Serpent basically for the rest of the game. So... Uh, I think maybe this was a mistake, but it looks like it pays off. They're just going to set two pass back to us. And we can actually win by attributing the Scientist and the Serpent for a Dark Magician here. Now we can attack in for 19 and 25, and that will indeed be the end of the game. So very, very cool to see. You know, game one, they kind of won with Blue Eyes because they won with the Paladin. Uh, game two, we win with Dark Magician. Uh, so kind of cool to see the anime Titans sort of squaring off. Um, we're going to go into game three. I don't think we change up our side deck too much. I think we might side out the hand rips again, uh, for like Regeki breaks, but, uh, oh, we bring out a Kaiku as well because they're on soul period in light. Yeah. Um, so, and Kaiku is really good against decks that want to banish. They're going to pitch a Thunder Dragon, grab two more Thunder Dragons to hand here. And uh, they are going to fire a Confi, which is quite unfortunate for us. They're going to take the Fiber Jar, which is a great comeback card for us. So kind of unfortunate that we lose that. They're going to set to set a uh, Mysterious Monster, pass back to us. We're just going to bring out this Kaiku, hit into their set, just try and get aggressive here. Um, we could have also potentially gotten defensive, but they know our hand. So, like, um, you know, it's they can play around whatever we set, potentially. But they're going to use Magician of Faith, grab back a Confi. We're going to set one, pass back to them. They've got Scapegoat here in the end phase here, uh, which might mean that they're setting up for, like, a Thousand Eyed Strict play. They're going to MST our back row, fire a meta, go for this Thousand Eyed Restrict, and uh, they will be able to suck up our Kaiku there, which is quite unfortunate. They're also going to Confi, rip a card out of our hand. They're going to rip the Apprentice Magician, which is the best card for them to take there. Uh, so, kind of unfortunate. We're in a really, really rough spot. We don't want to set this Magician of Faith because we don't have any spells to get back. Uh, I mean, I guess MST is a spell. So what we can do here is actually we can set this Magician of Faith. Uh, when they declare an attack with Thousand Eyes to attack into the Faith, we can MST their Kaiku, then grab back the MST. So it's kind of neat. Uh, and that is indeed what we're going to do. Uh, we're actually going to think about whether we want to, you know, MST the Unknown back row or the Kaiku. Um, but I think given that we don't have any monsters here, we do just want to sort of uh, neutralize their aggressive threat at this point. And we do indeed get back the MST, so I'm just going to grab that back now. Uh, Magician is a mandatory effect, so even if I missed that, um, this is the correct game state that it should be in. So uh, we draw a Scientist, which is actually pretty good. We can potentially bring a Scientist and then suck up their Thousand Eyes Trick with our Thousand Eyes Trick. But we're actually going to set the Scientist, given that the stats line up really well for just, you know, having them attack into this set. Um, and now, this is kind of unfortunate if, like, because we can't flip up the Scientist on our own. But I feel like this is kind of like a good stalemate to have, at least. So they're going to attack into the Scientist. No one takes any damage from that. And they're going to set one pass back to us. Now, we do have this MST here. Uh, so that can be good for later. But we're going to bring out a Restrict. Suck up their Restrict. Um, and that will destroy the Magician of Faith. Then we're going to tribute out this Magical Marionette over the Restrict that we just brought out. And hit into one of their monsters. Unfortunately, they have Ring for the Marionette. So that won't stick around, which is... You know, kind of sad because Marionette's a really cool boss. But we're going to set this MST pass back to our opponent. Now, we could potentially, like, just, you know, blind MST both their back rows. Um, but I want to represent some more bluffs because Scientist is kind of a weak card on its own. Our opponent's going to bring out a Soul Purity and Light here. And they're going to hit in to the Scientist, clearing that. Uh, they'll pass back to us. We draw Change of Heart, which won't quite do it here. Just got to hope that they don't have another monster. Um, they've got meta, though, that will bring out a Ryu Sentry, which will shut off our traps, but we're not playing any traps, so that's kind of funny. Uh, they've got a Regeki break as well. We'll MST their remaining back row. It's an IO. We'll MST that as well. Um, and they're going to attack in for 2k here. Now, we're in kind of a rough spot. Sentry can't actually be Change of Hearted because it can't be targeted by spell cards. Um, so that is kind of unfortunate. 
and Ring will also not help us here because uh, Ring on Senshi will not do anything because they can just pay a thousand and negate that, and also that will also kill us. So, um, yeah, nothing we really could have done there at the end of the game, but uh, yeah, quite unfortunate to see, um, especially given like the match could have potentially gone a completely different direction if we had won game one. But uh, I I greatly misplayed and I apologize for those misplays, but hopefully you can use them as a bit of an educational. Um, sort of guide if you are planning on playing a deck like this in the future. Now, I will say I think this deck is not very good at all. Um, the Royal Magical Libraries are too defensive. You really do want to be getting a bit aggressive in this format, as we saw in the Breaker Finals. If you're up against a more serious meta threat like a Scientist deck, uh, you want to be aggressive, cutting down their life points. Royal Magical Library doesn't really play into that that well. And also the boss monster of the deck, Magical Marionette, is really, really cool, um, but there's so much removal that is never going to stick around long enough to actually make good use of its effect. Now, there are potential cards you could bring in here, like Royal Decrees, just to shut down your opponent's removal traps, um, which could be good, but there are also very, very strong spells as well uh, that can destroy Magical Marionette too. So it's like, I don't really think you'll be able to be in many situations where you manage to get Magical Marionette to stick, get to use its effect all the time. Um, so yeah, I don't think this deck is the best, but you know, I wanted to try it out. I think it's a really cool gimmick. Uh, and even if it's not the best, I don't think it's the worst either. So I encourage you to try it out and maybe improve upon my deck list. Uh, if you like the concept, but what do you all think about this deck? Do you think that it's just heart, hot garbage, or do you think that there's actually some potential here and that you'll be trying to experiment with it in the future? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this sort of content, please be sure to subscribe. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. It would be really nice to reach that by the end of the year. Uh, so if you're not already subscribed and you want to see more content like this, then definitely subscribe. But until next time, I've been Ben from YGF from Zero, and I'm signing off.